then I, nice to meet you. And I'm Professor Neelu Gupta. Yeah, I teach my Indian language Hindi in Dianza College. And now I'm welcoming you on behalf of Global Women Power. And many, many congratulations to you <laughs> for your nice victory. And uh, we are all proud of you as being a woman. So we really welcome you. Thank you. Uh, if you don't mind, let us know something about your background. Okay. Well, I'm um, one of three kids. I am the oldest child. Um, I grew up in New England, mm -hmm. um, went to uh, college in Minnesota, mm -hmm. and then right out of school came out here to the Bay Area. So mm -hmm. took kind of two big steps across the country, and mm -hmm. I've been here in Fremont mm -hmm. for about 34 years. 34 years? Yeah. Yeah, long time Fremont resident, so. Nice to know. <laughs> yeah, Fremont, how do you like Fremont? Well, Fremont's changed a lot. Um, when I first moved here, I'm, I'm getting to appreciate uh, what Fremont is. When I first moved here, it was because um, I worked um, on the peninsula and I could afford to buy a home over in Fremont and could not afford to buy a home over in the peninsula. So the commuting was difficult. All of those things about being away from people that I worked with every day was difficult. Um, but over the years, I've come to appreciate Fremont, and I'm really happy that this is where I ended up. So, Fremont is just like a family. I think yes. So. Yeah. Okay. Small city. Yeah. So now let's talk about something for your uh, victory. So how this uh, thought came in your mind? To fight the election? Well, it, it really was a little bit um, uh, unscheduled, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, I have a transit background, okay. so I worked for 14 years in transit over 14 years. in San Mateo mm -hmm. County. And um, I got, during that time, I got very passionate about transit because as a rider, and I, day, I was a daily rider on the bus system, I took the Dumbarton Express every day. Mm -hmm. So, um, as a rider, I got really frustrated with some of the issues that we had, and I could see things that, you know, we could do better. Um, I also then got involved in um, the management, uh, American Public Transportation Association, so kind of the management side of it, and, and I, I was mentored by some very uh, well-educated, uh, very good um, general managers around the country um, in transportation. So um, they kind of gave me the background to, you know, kind of, even in my job that I had with San Mateo. So, you know, it was something that I, I worked in San Mateo County. I, I got involved in transportation issues and things here in Alameda County. And so it kind of, um, somebody had mentioned to me that this would probably be a good role for me. And initially, um, I was retired and I was enjoying retirement very much, um, but I missed the transit world. And so I thought that this was a good opportunity to go back in with my experience and to try to make things better here in South County. I'm glad to know that you are experienced. You are not an experienced person and glad to know that you want to serve the community and being a retired person, still you want to work. <coughs> This is a good thing for us. So, little more that what are your plans? What, how you want to change, or you have the new strategies, or what were the things which you were feeling not good for the people for AC transit? Yeah, so there's a couple of different areas there. I mean, my plan initially is to just really learn as much as I can around about this agency mm -hmm. and about our area because. Um, we're a little bit different when it comes to transit because we really are kind of a suburban and we, it's, we're not like a major city where, you know, so the transportation and mobility needs in general are a little bit different. Um, but we still have the needs of students, the disabled, the low income, our huge population that need these types of services. And that's where I, I really want to make the rider experience better. Um, things will happen in the operations. Um, and you aren't going to you know, stop all of those things from happening. But you can at least communicate more. You can at least um, make it so that people understand more about what's happening um, instead of it kind of being um, 
you know, an unknown, and you just don't know whether you're going to be standing on the corner and your bus is going to show up or not. So um, the rider experience is big. I also want to plan for the future. Um, transportation and housing are huge issues. They go along together. Um, the whole issue we have with climate change and greenhouse gases, transportation's our biggest um, uh, problem there. Um, it needs a lot of help, and we need to plan for that. So transportation is changing, yeah. um, just like people's needs are changing a little bit, the mobility needs, mm -hmm. but we need to be ready to, to handle that, and we need to learn yeah. to evolve, and we can't run systems the way we did 20 years ago. It just isn't gonna work. And so we need people in there who are willing to think about things differently, and, and try to figure out some different ways. So that's kind of the other thing that I'm, I'm hoping to bring to the table is, is um, what are some things maybe we can do to um, help evolve the agency into what it needs to be, you know, 20 years from now. Right, I'm glad that you are thinking not only present but for the future also, yeah. because uh, that, that's a very good idea. I really appreciate this. And uh, yeah, we hope that uh, uh, we, uh, our community will be glad in your hands and they will get the new things, new ideas from you. And, and they can, and there should be uh, some platform for the uh, community to give you their uh, feedback. Yes. So if you make that your priority, I think, because the feedback is very necessary that way. Okay. Uh, other thing, uh, being a woman, you are working since so many years with the, um, with the men and with the other industries. So what is your, what are the uh, difficulties faced by the women or how do you feel in workplace, how we are safe and what are the problems and how we enjoy so we can, just Being a woman, um, so I, I, I had the, I guess the luxury or whatever of working. So first I worked in the airline business, that's what brought me here. So I actually was with United Airlines for 23 years. And, and I'm in information technology. Mm -hmm. So both information technology and the airline business are very male focused. Mm -hmm. Um, it, they are predominantly a male world. Yeah. Um, you know, more often than not, when people find out you were for United Airlines, they just assume that you were a flight attendant because that's the only woman that could be working at an airline, right? You know, were mm -hmm. flight attendants, mm -hmm. and so, and then as being part of IT as well, it's also a very male, predominantly male um, mm -hmm. thing. So I have had those struggles along the years. Um, the whole idea of of um, people using their positions of power right. to get the things they need. I've experienced that. Um, and um, when I was in my career, when I was a lot younger, um, those those did have a way of influencing my behavior, right? Um, because um, I wasn't necessarily as strong as I am today. Today, I am able to you know, it's all about having the confidence to know that, you know, right is right and wrong is wrong yeah. and you don't have to cross that line if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't have the confidence in your own abilities or in the abilities of the people around you to support yeah. you, that can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been through those difficult times. Um, I've come out of it stronger. I think it made me a stronger person. Um, and um, it's, it's sad and unfortunate that we're still fighting some of the same um, same stereotypes, um, you know, the whole thing, the whole gender inequality, you know, women doing the same jobs but men being paid yeah. more. Um, I was lucky in that I don't have a family to raise, so I never had the um, that kind, that of, kind problem. of problem mm -hmm. where I had to, you know, it was a choice between a profession or a family. Mm -hmm. um, and, and part of that might be because my choice had been profession versus family, in all honesty, but. Um, but that was the choice I made long ago. So, because um, people struggle with that all the time. I was lucky to not have to struggle with that part of the, right. of the issue. But um, it really is about getting that confidence mm -hmm. and recognizing who the people are around you that will support you and having that support structure in place. So I think this comes with the experience or with the yeah. age it comes up. Yeah. 
it comes with age, but I wish it didn't have to become with such old age. For my work. <laughs> I mean, I wish, I wish it could have happened a lot younger, yeah, like so that it, yes. you can have that, you know, a longer period of time to really um, be. Um, it's not that I wasn't effective, because I think I was very effective, but it, it just would have been a little bit different. I think. I agree. It's, it's a little difficult, otherwise also for the women because they have to handle the work situation, the family. So it's double uh, for them, so they have to manage it. They need uh, quite courage for to do that, yes. so they need really support. Very much. But I'm glad that you people are, we are all doing good. Uh, the main question is our this organization, Global Women Power. How can, what are your ideas, suggestions, that how can we play a better role and, and what are the areas where we can um, where we can adjust ourselves and we can find new things, new areas to work for that. Yeah, I, you know, I think it, it still does go back to having a support structure in place mm -hmm. and having people feel comfortable to use that support structure. So in order to, you know, I think you you need the confidence to be able to overcome it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you get the confidence from yourself. You get the confidence from from the people around you who are helping you mm -hmm. to recognize what your own abilities are. So having a, a, a support structure in place that people can go to, talk about things, come up with new ways of, of, of doing that, I think is really good. The one good thing I think that all women have and they don't recognize the whole idea of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. I think we are are much better at working with people, working with teams, building those types of relationships in a work environment mm -hmm. because we have to do that with our families, right? It's just, it's just it's sometimes like raising kids when you are a manager, and um, and I think women are, are are way better at that, and and um, and so they need to learn that those are their strengths, and they need to learn how to play off of their strengths. So I think teaching people about those types of things is important. You need then, teamwork. Um, it should be. Well, just teaching. how you talk to people and how you build that. Um, the whole idea of, of, um, of, of recognizing the, the position you're in at the yeah. time and what might be going on in order to, to uh, make a different choice. Uh, yeah. To recognize your ability, how much yes. you can work, what are the... You know, best things come up yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, nice to meet you and I'm glad that thank you, you so much and again congratulations on behalf of thank you. Uh, women power and uh, we hope that not only women but whole community will be benefited from your work well and I hope that the community happens. feels comfortable I, yeah. I totally agree with it being open and honest and I wish people I hope people do come out and do speak and I, I love what you guys are doing so thank please so keep much. it up please keep it up thank we need so it yeah. thank you. Thank you.